I hope this workshop, Fantastical Deep Sea Creatures, will inspire you to try some new things out, you know, be creative, um, explore art, and find new ways to look at the world. Art is important to me because it allows me to share the beauty and the possibility that I see in the world around me with other people. Art is a tool that allows you to expand the limitations of your understanding, of your imagination, because usually the limitations of a project are the limitations you set upon yourself. They're mostly the limitations in your head. Art allows you to push against your limitations and expand your understanding of yourself and the world around you. As an Afro-Caribbean woman, art did something wonderful for me, which is give me the agency to tell my own stories.
There's actually um, photos of me drawing from when I was a little over a year old, when I was my hands were barely enough, uh, large enough to hold a pen. Um, artist drawing is truly my first language. So I actually don't remember a time when I didn't draw, when I didn't make figurines from my mom's living room table, where I wasn't um, making art and experimenting with materials. Making art was so attractive and liberating for me as a child. Um, as a dyslexic child, it was very empowering to be able to communicate without fighting with spelling and grammar and words and just feel like I could say anything, say it loud and clear. I started calling it art when I, when I was about 15, 17 years old when I started taking painting lessons and then went to art school. So I started taking classes when I was about 15, now I am 36. So I've been pursuing an art career for 21 years, I'm making art, making it the central focus in my life, putting a lot of um, time and energy into it. I draw, I paint, I sculpt uh, mainly ceramics but also other materials like um, resins and plastics um, and I also make video and I love different things about each different medium. Drawing is my first language and it's great, it, it allows me to just with the same line um, show you a cloud or show you fire or water or a figure um, and it's very immediate, it's my favorite way of making notes to this day. Um, painting allows me to create a lot of subtle gradations that I like and to work with color um, which can express so much about you know emotions and feeling and mood um and then sculpture allows me to be with my creations in the same space um and experience it that way um i'm also i do mainly ceramics when i do sculpture and the reason why is because ceramics is a very attractive material aesthetically but it's also a very 
historically rich material um, I was very attracted to it because if we were to look at our history to the lens of ceramics we would have to look at the whole world we would have to start in China we have to go to Japan we would have to go to Latin America Africa and it would almost be a view of our history as world history or human history um, and video I love it because of um, the moving image is so seductive so engaging and I really enjoy making my work move and breathe and palpitate I'm working right now on painting video and sculpture in a parallel way, way just making them together and having them complement each other I do have a studio which I'm in right now. Um, as you can see, it's full of materials and reference images. And I mean, you can see here like shells that I really like to look at, um, feathers. There's also um, reference photos of artists that I look at on the wall, like Anna Mendieta. I don't know if you can see it that well, but it's there. Um, Egon Schiele. And you'll see some um, references like clippings from scientific magazines that I look at for inspiration. Um, you can get a sense of the rest of my studio. I really need to have a studio because I need to be able to put my, you know, make my work somewhere. If you look at my studio, you'll see a glaze with, you know, sculptures that haven't been fired yet and materials and books and that's another big shelf behind this painting full of glazes and other materials that I use regularly. Um, you'll also see that I have um, prints out of my work and you know drawings or sketches that I make. I like to put everything up on the wall and let it sink in, let it germinate new ideas. I can sketch anywhere and I often do have ideas when I'm on the train and I'll just jot them down or do them on my phone real quick um, but I do need to have a studio a physical space where I can work on large paintings that take a lot of time and need to you know be in a safe environment um, and I also need to have space to make my ceramic sculpture which tends to get heavy and fragile before it's fired so definitely you know need to have a studio and I, I love this space is where I spend most of my time so I do lots of different things in my small studio so um, I'll you know I'll sculpt I'll make molds I'll paint I'll draw I'll edit videos in my computer in here so everything is movable my table goes up and down so I can work standing up or sitting down depending on what I need um, and I also you know I make large paintings that take a lot of time and have a lot of detail so I'll have you know all of my reference images on the wall so I can look at them while I'm working so um, I make a lot of um, ceramic sculpture that's heavy and fragile until it's fired so it's you can't really move it and that's part of why I need a studio I need a space where um, I can put things down and I can experiment and just have them be exactly where I left them until I come back the next day So it would be this piece called um, Murmurs of the Deep, which represents a point of departure for me. I also brought a lot of myself into this piece, a lot of cultural references that I'm usually quite reserved about, um, and just allowed myself to be loud and bold and proud about it. So I trusted not only the technical aspects of my work, which I've honed over um, lots of years of rigorous training and practice, but um, also the playfulness um, and the sort of creative, the imaginary parts of my work that are sort of the same sort of motivators that make me want to draw, make me want to make art as a small child. It's the first of a series. It birthed a whole series of work that's um, video, sculptures, paintings. So there's a lot going on in here. As you can see, we graze over the canvas. There is a lot of scientific reference. 
Um, a lot of it is from Ems Heckel, um, Art Forms in Nature, um, where he does this engravings and drawings of radiolarians, which are these micro um, organisms that are floating in the seas um, that have this beautiful um, silica beautiful intricate silica skeletons. I also looked at the Avalon explosion, which is an explosion of life that precedes, precedes the Cambrian explosion. Um, and in the Avalon explosion, we have animals that are abstract looking, that don't quite look like animals, where we had to um, actually go into the fossils and extract sort of um, fat so samples of fat, of fossilized fat, to know that they were animals. One of them is Dickinsonia acostata, which I use as reference. Through this piece, I am redefining for myself what it means to be human. How do we fit into the larger story of our planet? Um, how do we relate to other living creatures? So I have been looking at the um, Atlantic Ocean this piece and looking at all the things that happened there are some tra tragedies like um, the Middle Passage where some of my ancestors um, were involved in, in and just looking at but not fixating on that but looking at the sort of deep time history of that ocean as a point of departure as an inspiration and I you know, it was also motivated by an experience I had a few years ago um, in a super hot, sticky summer New York day. I was in Manhattan Beach and it was full of people. There was people everywhere, there was a ton of noise. And I remember just looking out into the ocean and just seeing how unbothered the ocean was by all of this. and just having that moment of realization um, that the ocean was there before anything that remotely looked like us um, existed and it will continue to be there for a really long time. If we look closely we'll see tentacles and that appear in different iterations and different shapes and other forms that sort of appear and reappear in the fossil record. There are the ways in which life um, continues to proliferate, to become abundant. Here we have some cultural references. For example, this is a Dominican carnival devil mask. Um, you can see it here as it would usually look. Um, and this is a, not only a cultural symbol, but also um, for me a symbol of being allowed to be mischievous and sort of um, act on your instincts in a way that's unmediated by the social contract. Um, and these are usually men, so I've made some performative works like Diabla, She Devil, where I am wearing a um, a vacuum form plastic mask where you can see that I'm a woman underneath that mask and I am giving myself through that mask permission to act upon my instincts and impulses in ways that are not or at least not in the ways that are prescribed for women and for people of color in my culture. So another thing that I'm working on is this piece, which is called Murmurs of the Deep, I Remember Being You. I just got it out of the kiln. Um, and it's, it's quite the process. I love ceramics, but it's very process intensive. Um, I First I modeled half of it, and then I made a plaster mold out of that. And that meant that I could push clay into that mold and put those two halves together to get my main shape. Um, I am making a series of these sculptures that are gonna have different patterns on their surface that are um, referencing different um, fossils actually. Th this one is referencing Dickinsonia on its back um, 
and you know it's quite a process after the firing the first firing i had to glaze it and that meant um that to get the result i wanted i had to inlay this glazes which meant that the glazes are painted next to each other even when the, when the, fine, the lines are really really fine and there is no overlap so it's a labor intensive process but one that i do quite enjoy now i'm dreaming up um how i'm going to present this piece how i'm gonna install it how are you gonna experience it so i'm always making sketches um coming dreaming up new ideas one of them is for example this papier mache model um of a sculpture that i have yet to figure out um how large will it be which materials um where should it stand um so that's in the works um, in very early stages um, and then sometimes I'll make small explorations in ceramics where I'm just playing with forms and ideas and it might be that it becomes a larger piece afterwards or um, I might intervene it with other materials and finish it that way. I think art is worth exploring even if you don't ambition yourself as an artist even if you want to become a scientist or a lawyer or a teacher um, it, art will um, help you hone your problem solving skills and sort of express yourself creatively it will develop your creative thinking which is very useful for other fields so if you want to be an artist though and you want to pursue a creative career I would say that the first thing you need to cultivate is discipline. Lots of people are talented and you know you might be very talented but you need to have the discipline to get to work every day regularly to you know even when you're um, tired and have to balance out other obligations that you, you still you know connect to that which make you want to do art so I, be it um, a love for drawing or modeling or for sewing and get into the studio and make the work and you know bring your best to your work so i would also tell young artists to um learn as much as you can soak it all in learn how to make molds learn how to mold learn how to um, draw paint um, edit videos um, make photography look at um, art historical references like look at flemish paintings and learn how to um, paint transparencies and subtle gradations and how to make realistic work learn how to make abstract work learn how to um, have a conceptual dialogue about your work look at conceptual art um, also look at um, what's going on around you in the world as a reference and the more you learn it's or techniques um, you learn it's like um, learning new words it expands your vocabulary it gives you that many more um, tools with which to express yourself clearly um, and on the practical side um, the more you know um, the more options you'll have when you're looking at careers and when you're looking at employment we see before we speak there is an immediacy to communication to visual communication that precedes languages and connects to our instincts to that which makes us human For our Let's Get Creative workshop, um, Fantastical Deep Sea Creatures, I looked at some of my favorite rest references like um, Ernst Haeckel's um, Forms in Nature um, and I also look at um, images from the Red Sea, from the corals and um, jellyfish out there and I started on a dark piece of paper using some watercolor pencils and oil pastels and water soluble cray crayons and I just um, looked at references and let fan fantasies or creativity imagination do the rest of the work. I started with the curvy line of the my sort of 
bioluminescent medusa worm that I was creating and I looked at the translucent blue qualities of the jellyfish and this sort of fairly um, delicate transparent membranes in their tentacles and also looking at bioluminescence and wanting to create that sense of depth and space um, and you know I just enjoyed the drive process I hope this um, workshop inspires you to come up with your own fantastical deep sea creatures and that you know you share what you've made with us so I hope you enjoy creating your own fantastical deep sea creatures and that this interview gave you a glimpse into what goes into creating art and what art as a profession is like and that if you want to pursue a creative career that you know that you know being able to share um, your view of the world and the beauty of the world with other people it's super rewarding and definitely worth all the hard work that goes into an art career. If you don't want to pursue an art career, I hope that you um, that you give art a try and let and allow yourself to discover new ways to look at of looking at the world around you. Thank you for watching our Virtual Purple Museums broadcast. Our fall broadcasts are every Tuesday and Thursday on Facebook and YouTube. Visit us online and in person. Bill's Backyard, the museum's outdoor space, is open every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Stay in the loop by joining our email list. Visit www.cdm.org for more information.